Hello, everybody. Um, thank you again for joining us today. Um, my name is Sue Babich, and I am the Associate Dean of Global Health and the uh, Acting Chair and Professor of Global Health in the Richard M. Fairbank School of Public Health at Indiana University, um, where I also direct the Professional Doctoral Degree Program, the DRPH Program in Global Health Leadership. And um, that's what we're going to talk about today. Um, I appreciate that all of you are interested in the program. Um, I, um, as I just said to Crystal, I'm going to um, do um, PowerPoint free. We're just going to talk. And um, what I'd like to do is give you a little bit of background and some information about the nuts and bolts of how the program works. And then um, open it up to Q&A. I know you guys will learn as much from each other in hear, hearing um, your questions and the responses um, as you will from me. So um, I'll try to keep it brief, but um, I wanna give you a little bit of an overview because this is an, a non-traditional DRPH program. Um, you know, um, a, a colleague of mine likes to say that if you've seen one DRPH program, you've seen one DRPH program. And um, that is true. However, generally speaking, um, the DRPH program or the DRPH degree is for people who have practice oriented career goals. And, and that's the way um, we see it as well here at the Fairbanks School. Um, so the DRPH is specifically for people who are out there working in the field, um, who expect to remain out in field-based positions in varied settings. So um, people coming into DRPH programs, um, and this one as well, may be working in um, the nonprofit sector, in the for-profit sector, maybe working in ministries of health or nonprofit organizations or NGOs or the pharmaceutical industry or other businesses and industry in hospital systems, you name it, anywhere where you have uh, the potential to have the imp an impact on the public's health. Um, you know, we, we take people from varied backgrounds and settings. And in fact, that's one of the strengths of the program is that we really aim for bringing in diverse cohorts of students. So um, that is at odds then with the PhD program. PhD programs are typically for people who want to have academic careers or who want to go into careers where their focus is research. So there's like a bifurcation. The PhD is for academics and researchers. The DRPH is for practitioners. So this program is for practitioners. But even beyond that, um, it is specifically for people who are working full time. And um, so everybody in this that comes into this program is working full time and they are at least at the mid or even more senior level in their careers. So we are, um, this is a program that is specifically targeting people who have been out in the workforce for enough years that they have progressed up to about um, the mid level. And so they are managing teams of people and um, have got you know, several years of experience at that level under their belts. Um, we'll, we can come back and I can answer more questions about that later. But um, it's a three-year professional doctoral degree program. We um, have the coursework in the first two years and the coursework is tightly choreographed to help you move through the program efficiently because th three years for a doctoral program is a relatively short amount of time. Um, in fact, the average length of time to completion in um, this particular DRPH model is about three and a half years, but um, it's possible to get through the program in just under three years. Um, uh, and, and the coursework again is concentrated in the first two years you go, you go to school year round. So that's fall, spring and summer, taking 18 credit hours per year in each of years one and two. And then in the third year, you work independently on a dissertation and it's a very applied practice oriented dissertation. It has all the same components as a PhD dissertation, but the um, focus of the dissertation is different. And I'm happy to answer questions about that too. But um, the third year is um, nine credit hours. So um, a total of um, you know, 18 and 18, 36 
plus nine, you know, credit hours. Um, it, you you could have, you could take some additional uh, coursework, um, elective credit hours if you want to, but you don't have to. Um, if you come into the program and you don't have a background in public health, and um, so you don't have an MPH or another um, pu public health graduate degree, um, then, then you do have to take the core course in um, public health. And um, we, I'm happy to answer questions about that as well. We encourage people to get that course knocked out before you enter the doctoral program, but it is possible to apply and be admitted to this doctoral program uh, even without that having had that um, prerequisite. And then you, you would take that prerequisite course um, within the first two years in the doctoral program along with your doctoral coursework. Um, or once you know that you've been admitted, you could even take it in the summer before the doctoral program begins. So it used to be that the uh, public health core courses were five core courses, usually three credit hours each. And so typically that prerequisite MPH level, um, uh, those core courses comprised about 15 credit hours. Um, our accrediting agency now enables us to integrate those core courses into one larger core course. And that's a four credit hour course that we offer at IU. And you can take that course online. So, so taking care of that prerequisite for those of you who might not have a background or formal degree in public health has gotten a lot easier. Um, so in addition to the coursework, which um, is all conducted via Zoom like this, um, we, the program includes three short face-to-face -face residential sessions, uh, in, usually in Indianapolis, in each of years one and two. So it works like this. Um, if you um, enter the program, you come for orientation to Indianapolis, you come to, for orientation in mid-August and you are here for a week. And then you go back to wherever you work and live. And um, we conduct the courses for that semester via Zoom. But then you um, come back for another face-to-face -face session in um, early January. And at that time, we wrap up the previous semester's courses and we launch the coming semester's courses in person. So you have a chance to meet face-to-face -face with each other and with your faculty. And then we also um, include in those residential sessions opportunities for you to um, meet with health leaders and others from whom we think you'll learn some valuable lessons and insights into leadership. Because the focus of this doctoral program is change leadership. So um, we, we describe uh, uh, leadership as being um, the ability to influence those over whom you have no control. And, um, you know, so um, that really requires you to master some competencies that relate to um, political savvy, um, conflict negotiation, uh, uh, lead, and, uh, and other leadership skills and abilities um, that um, are, are necessary to uh, really be effective at leading teams of people toward a common vision. Um, this is a urgent need that has been identified, long been identified by many groups around the world. Um, this program model actually was inspired uh, back in the late 1980s by an Institute of Medicine report that um, put out a cry for um, leadership development among the senior public health workforce. So that was the inspiration of uh, the first DRPH programs that focused on leadership. And, um, and then that call for leadership development was repeated in subsequent Institute of Medicine reports and, um, and other task force findings um, by various groups that have you know, continued throughout the years right up to now. Uh, because even during this pandemic, um, the pandemic itself has really exposed the continuing lack of um, leadership capacity among the senior public health workforce around the world. So um, our program continues to um, specifically target working health professionals from varied backgrounds, um, 
and uh, we use adult learning principles. So um, we, you know, we we do everything we can to set the stage for you to have a rich learning environment with the experience with with the focus on experiential learning because we don't think you can learn leadership didactically through you know, lectures. We think it has to be learned through um, really highly interactive exchanges and debates among people that, like you, have experience and, um, and interaction and exposure with, um, you know, others who have had experiences um, from diverse settings, you know, people who have, um, you know, gone before you and, um, you know, have acquired a lot of, re a lot of um, experience. So we, um, we, we have access to lots of practitioners who are in senior positions all over the world in organizations where they are improving the public's health. We, um, this, this curriculum is, has a global focus. So we um, include faculty that are nationals teaching from other countries, you know, so that they bring that, um, those cultural perspectives to bear in their teaching. Um, we include students from all over the world. So not only the faculty, but the students are, um, you know, far flung, um, you know, they're coast to coast from the, in the US, but they're also all over the world on every continent. And um, we, we use a cohort model. So everybody is admitted um, into a cohort and you move in lockstep through your courses with your cohort. And even if you're the world's expert in a particular topic, you still take that same course with everybody in your cohort. And um, you, know, you might help contribute more in, in, you know, to the teaching and learning in that class if you happen to be you know, a real expert in that. And, and that's kind of how it goes. You, you will learn as much from each other as you will from the faculty in this program. But um, um, there's a real emphasis on diversity of backgrounds, geographical diversity, um, we um, use international faculty. Um, the curriculum itself is globalized. So um, uh, we, even though the program itself is seated in the US, um, we use a lot of, um, well, we, we, we discuss everything in terms of, um, you know, a holistic global perspective. And um, so um, the coursework takes place over the first three years, you come to campus for a week in August, a week in early January, and again um, in early May for a little shorter visit. And you do that in year one, and then again in year two. And then after year two, you take comprehensive written exams. You are in a position to defend a dissertation proposal. And um, at that point, once you have success, successfully uh, passed those two hurdles, you move on and you work independently in the third year with an advisor, with a dissertation chair and a team of mentors, and um, you complete your doctoral dissertation. You defend the dissertation. Most everybody does it via distance um, because most people's uh, mentors are you know, out in another country or uh, outside the state. and um, and you defend your dissertation and and you finish. So uh, that's the that's you know sort of the sequence. Um, the um, eligibility requirements for this program are a master's degree. It does not have to be in public health, um, but you do have to be working full time in um, some kind of a setting where you are um, relatively directly uh, uh, impacting the public's health. Um, so it's a master's degree with at least a 3.0 grade point average or equ equivalent. Um, you need to be um, working full time and um, you need to have been working long enough that you have gotten to at least a mid level in your career. Um, and, and, and then you've, you've been there for at least five years working at that level. Um, we can talk about, you know, what, what level is high enough, you know, it, the, the program is competitive. And, um, you know, we have more qualified people than we can accept into the program. So we are looking for um, diversity, you know, we want these cohorts to be diverse. So we bring in mixed groups of people that um, are, are, for the most part, going to look different from each other, um, you know, to really maximize the learning potential. And then, um, 
uh, we are looking for people, you know, with really substantial um, management and leadership experience. Um, and so in addition to, in addition to the duration and type of experience you have and a master's degree, um, we are also looking for people, frankly, that demonstrate that they've got some passion around improving the public's health. Um, we want to bring in people that are not satisfied with staying where they are. We, you know, we are looking for people that have um, ambitions for top jobs where they can have much more um, influence on the public's health. So we, we are looking for um, individuals that know why they want this doctoral, doctoral degree and can articulate what they're hoping to get from the doctoral degree. Um, not only what they're hoping to get, but what, what you can give to others in your cohort. Because again, the way that this program works, uh, we're really depending on you learning from each other. So we ask you to complete a personal statement that is real, a really important part of the application package. And that is um, a way for you to demonstrate um, some of the insights that you've gained through the experience that you've had and um, where you can um, sort of feed back to us um, what you feel that you have to contribute to a cohort's learning and also what you want to gain from the program yourself and where you expect that to take you. So um, it really requires you to have given enough thought to where you want this doctoral program to take you. And, um, and that's an opportunity to you know, share that with us. Um, <clears throat> so I think, Sean, have I missed anything? Um, let's see, master's degree, passion, um, you know, good academic preparation, work experience, and um, that's, that's, that's basically it. Um, we are accepting, we, we, we have for the last couple of years, because of the demand for the program, um, we, we have been experimenting with um, taking in a cohort of more junior people. So um, we, we've had um, enough applications from you know, qualified people that we've been able to fill our regular cohort of um, students, but then we've also been experimenting with taking a cohort of more junior people who, who don't have quite the same level of experience. Um, and um, we anticipate that uh, we will likely admit that emerging leaders cohort again this coming year. Um, it, at, at any rate, it all depends on the applicant pool, and we are just now beginning to uh, review the applications that have come in for this next intake. Um, applications for the next year's intake are due on January 1st, and, um, and at least those are the applications that'll get first consideration. And then, um, um, you know, if, if there's still space in the program, we would consider applications that came in after that. But um, um, gen generally, we try to make these um, admissions decisions relatively early in the new year to get, give everybody enough time to plan. And then um, the only other thing I'll say is that COVID has um, caused us to make some changes in the program temporarily. So the residential sessions for the last two years have been meeting via distance. Uh, we've been doing them virtually. Um, also, uh, once a year, we um, expect to take the program on the road. And rather than meeting in Indianapolis, we um, would like at least once a year or once every other year to have our students meet somewhere else in the world. And we've put that on pause for right now as well until we get through the pandemic and things normalize. So um, um, I guess I'll stop there.